Nick, we're here at the launch of the Airgrid sponsorship, uh, timing sponsorship of the All Ireland Championships. Uh, first to Tipperary straight away. What have you made of Tipperary in this championship? Of course, the league won uh, won a couple of games, got to the quarter final, beaten by Dublin. Last four games, three of them by a point. Then went through a monster, looked really good, four wins from four, monster final, fell flat, and then got through leash. So where are Tipperary? It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult one to answer, to be honest, Shane. Uh, and I'd see it exactly as you're after describing it now. I, I felt the league didn't do a huge amount for us. I don't think we found out, you know, if I was to be critical, I don't think we gave enough opportunities to enough of the youngsters, mm. um, would be my observation of the league. But uh, when we went down to Cork for the first day, to, to start around Robin, it was like a different tip team. Mm. You know, they really played top class hurling, uh, exploded, you know, onto the pitch. And, uh, you know, probably didn't look back in any of those four games in the, in the round Robin. I suppose maybe hindsight would have told us um, Limerick managed the last round Robin game a little bit better than we did and um, obviously it took some calculated decisions um, we just happened to pay a very high price uh, you know and we're just unlucky there to be honest um, big injuries to, to Bonner Marr uh, lost Cahal Barrett in for, with the hamstring so that ruled him out of the, the Munster final so you know what that brought in was we had to rejig our team yeah. and uh, probably ended up getting getting the margin being too big in that monster final loss mm. you know and I, I was I was concerned before I said you know we may not get a win here um, but I didn't envisage um, Limerick being you know having such a such a, a margin over us now you know is the margin relevant to me it is a bit relevant mm. it's a bit relevant I thought the competition was over with with 15-20 with minutes to go yeah, for sure um, and, and also maybe that carried over into the leash game because it seemed flat it did look flat it did look flat and I suppose what did we go you know what were we expecting when we went up to Dublin um, for me, you know, I'd be very pragmatic about this. We just needed to go through. You know, what there was no silverware, at, at, uh, uh, you know, to be had here. What, what we were really playing for was to find a better performance level within ourselves. To you know, if you like, start the healing process or start to you know, producing the, a, a top performance process again. We didn't get that. We did achieve what we came up to achieve ultimately, which was to go through. Mm. But we're no wiser. Um, or I suppose we're no more comfortable when we're getting ready for the semi-final against Wexford. But I will, I will say this, um, and you know, I think anybody that, that's been watching tape or has been, you know, knows how they play. I am not unhappy facing into this other semi-final. I think there's a massive prize at stake for whomever. Uh, I think it's a, it, you know, I think both Tip and Wexford, you know, find themselves at the, you know quasi easier side of this semi-final mm -hmm. that the other two at the other side look really really strong and I think after the weekend when we know who the, the finalists will be the favourites will still be at the other side regardless mm -hmm. and that doesn't that's not for a second suggesting who's going to win it but in terms of how we judge favourites um, so look for me this is it's getting very very simple again I think uh, for Tip Tip always have a chance of, of uh, you know in, in a game like this um, but it will take our absolute top performance. Now we haven't seen that for a very long while. I suppose not since, you know, I, won't, I wouldn't even suggest the, the last day against um, the last round robin game against Limerick. I would say I, any of the three previous games yeah. we were hurling better. Yeah. Wh what would be the areas of concern for you at the moment? And just to give you my own ones, six of thirty-one puckouts, one against Limerick, and I thought like the idea of going long on forward bubbles and. Callanan against that half back line was rarely going to work, especially if the short options to James Barry and Sean O'Brien weren't really working mm. out too. So it was like, where do Tip go? And after watching the game the last day, I'm not sure a whole lot has been learned either. Yeah, and uh, and you know there was there was interesting tactics at play the last day as well in, in terms of in terms of Leach stepping right back and mm. uh, leaving leaving James Barry almost have any puck outs that he wanted to have or that, you know, that they cho that we chose to play out through the lines. Um, and I think I think Sunday is going to be a bit like that as well. Uh, you know, Wexford have mastered the the sweeper system, and you know I, I can't see them deviating from the from the from it. I just think you know our confidence level ne needs to come up, and we've got to be persistent here. You know, and play through the lines. Um, I think how we how we fight it out in that middle third, and how we move in that middle third is critical. Mm. Um, personally, I'd love to see Brendan place right back out on, on the half position and avoid any temptation to you know he was used as a as, as our de facto sweeper as well a bit um, against Leash I'd much prefer to see him out in the thick of the action in the middle third mm. uh, I thought he was sitting back a little bit 
you know, and maybe a little underutilized for me. I thought he was a, uh, it was a massive loss, and in the in, and I, I think it had a bearing, even though he did a really fine job um, trying to curb Alan, um, Aaron Galan in the Munster final. I think he's he was he was a loss from the half line, and I would point to that as being one of the areas that I think we if we just get really solid there. And we have the potential to get really solid there. Uh, I think we, we, you know, I think there's huge benefits for us in terms of setting up attack and play, and winning that that middle third battle. I think that's key. Um, I wouldn't underestimate. I, I think our boys uh, will have learned an awful lot from that. The, 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 we didn't see it in Croke Park, but two things: the experience of having a game in Croke Park, and it was it was still a knockout game, winner takes all. We've achieved that. For us to get a chance to play in Croke Park, use our complement of four or five subs, which I think we did, is huge for the squad. Um, so I, th I just think our stars have started to align. What we need to, uh, to find here now is, is a performance level that has just been missing for the last two days. Well, how difficult is it as the manager, and like you've managed more or less this exact same mm. group, maybe one or two slight changes, but to try and find that balance between getting you know, uh, the right balance of hurling in the back line so you can hurl the ball out from the back, which is why I suppose I suppose for a number of reasons Brendan was putting the full mm. back line, but trying to get that, marry that situation where we can go long, but we can also go short and punish a team by going short as well, because you can't go long all day because no. teams have back lines are so good. Yeah. And that will be the case with Wexford too. Very much, and uh, you know, they're, they're, they are long exponents of, of, of using their sweeper. You know, Sean Murphy will sit back, he will sweep up a, 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 an amount of ball. I think for us, um, it's it's just to, to win the battles outside that line that we're in position to to hit good ball diagonal ball you know in terms of our straight down the line but however we choose to play it um, and to avoid Sean Murphy at all costs mm. because we don't need to feed that um, I think to be fair to uh, to Brian Hogan and McGrody, Brian has an array of shots uh, puck out shots that are second to none um, and I think he's worked exceptionally hard to put a really good trajectory on, on, on our puck outs that can be won anywhere in that middle third um, it's just you know I think when when Leash backed off so much from from particularly the James Barry uh, outlet ball when we were using him I think we just we just got caught and we ended up not maximizing mm. how we try and develop it out through the lines and, and you know to be fair I think tip, tip have they have really worked at finding a good balance there of, of using the lines and using a long ball mm. when it's on um, but ultimately this comes down to really basic stuff at the end of the day. Uh, our work rate and our intensity has to come up at least two to three levels from what we mm. saw in Croke Park uh, last Sunday week. Yeah. And that is a game leveller in itself. Mm. Now, it's not, it won't decide the game, but it, it, you know, that's the statement of intent. If you saw how you know, Wexford beat uh, Kilkenny in what, for me, was probably the game of the year, that game was just full of passion and all of the, you know, the, the really strong characteristics of any winning side and uh, I think we've, we've just got to find that form. What do you think about, uh, what's it like facing David Fitzgerald on the side, he's such a colourful character all that, yeah. you, you did it a couple <laughs> of times and the thing that comes to mind is the incident where himself and Jason Ford bump into each yeah. other, if I can put it that way, a couple yeah. of years ago, what's it like on the line, is, <laughs> is it constant buzzing in one of the years? But you know what, it's not, it's not to be fair, you know, he, he does, he does it, I'm sure there's a side show going on just 20, 20 yards away from you or 30 yards away from you. Um, and you know, to be to be fair, you have to love wh what Davy brings to the game. Uh, as an op opposition manager, to be honest, you just need to disengage mm. and just get on with your own job. Uh, I, he pulled a complete stroke on uh, on us um, in that in that league semi final in twenty in twenty seventeen for sure. And uh, and it achieved it achieved the, you know what he needed to achieve. Mm. He got them back into a game that we looked like we were just you know taken control of um, but you know he's just it's, uh, look that's what he brings but I, I wouldn't underestimate the rest of the things he, he brought like Kilkenny play, or Wexford won a really tight game against the masters of tight games uh, mm. and so like their confidence levels and what it meant to them and how they celebrated it was brilliant to see and I think that's 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 I suppose when you, s you look at you know what has he achieved down in Wexford he has brought some passion back to mm. what he's already you know I suppose passion in waiting county and do you, do you think like his his system se and style seems to be different than i suppose more traditional styles do you look at his uh, game plan and think that's very that wouldn't go down too well in tipperary do you know what um i i think it wouldn't go down too well in tipperary yeah. um but I, I i think caveat that and say what does it take to win 
Mm. So you know, I, I think his his game plan is working for the players that he at his disposal, and I think you shouldn't be you know I wouldn't be a, I, I don't believe any team should be a hostage to a system. Uh, I I prefer to be a hostage to the players that you have at your disposal and how uh, you you know wh what various attributes what works for them how are we going to get the most out of this squad and I think that, you know. We inclusion and diversity is a, is a great term in the workplace these days and I think inclusion and diversity in Hurland is fabulous uh, mm -hmm. and I think what guys bring uh, and you know the more you know I suppose the more different styles you have within a team the greater the you know the sum of the parts mm -hmm. are or the greater the performance potentially can be um, but uh, look flair for me Trump systems every day of every week yeah so when you're talking about those player attributes I look at the Wexford team and I see the pace of Lee Chin running up the middle, Rory O'Connor, Jack O'Connor, um, I'm Connor McDonald, and I'm Dermot O'Keefe even as sure. well. And I look at Tipperary and I see a team that has time and time again been accused of being a lack of pace. Mm. So is that a concern? No, uh, is not, there not for me. No, 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 there's absolutely no. This is, that's the, one of the greatest myths of all times, wh what, what we have. Um, I saw no evidence of a lack of pace in four games in the trot in Munster, mm. even though we had a, you know, a, a lacklustre league. Um, I think where we where we get exposed is you know we are an absolute attacking team and we just can get caught too far forward. So some mm. line is just too far forward. We don't have a decent shape in front of either our full back line or the probably the most exposed line in in hurling at times. Mm. And why did that happen? Like that seemed to happen a bit. The last like 2016, everyone mm. was perfect, brilliant hurling, yeah. fantastic all Ireland. 17 and 18, it, that just seemed to be the case throughout. That those huge oceans of space. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Uh, you know, I, for me, like I think, yeah. Look, there's, uh, there's always an, an awareness, uh, you know, and we we need our on-field generals to be able to, to, you know, to understand space and to understand what's good for us and, and get our resets um, as efficient as we possibly can. I think it comes down to appetite, work rate, yeah. and I think that trumps for me in tip. I think it's the huge, huge variable for me is that you know if if our boys. Um, if our boys are, are clued in and the, the, the work rate and intensity are at, a, are at the highest level we can bring on a particular day, there is never an issue of pace. Mm. It is more so to do with application. And um, how do you see this game going? I think I, I, I would still give us a really, really good chance in this. Um, I think we're, you know, we are, we are the kind of team and we've been through the mill here. You know, the bulk of this team have been around. They, they know exactly what's, what the ask will be like on, on on Sunday, we do haven't come, we haven't crossed swords at this level with Wexford to any extent over the last number of years. Mm. But we've seen them plenty. Um, what they have developed for me is that you know, three years on in, in the in the in the project for Davy, I'm looking at some of their players, at Conor McDonald, and Lee and they're absolutely huge physical men. Mm. They're you know, they are as conditioned as any of the top Tipperary guys. And you know, we would have we would have modelled ourselves and been able to try and compete with your Galways and Kilkenny's over the last yeah. 10 years you know so we've been at that level for a long period of time but I, I just see that Wexford have now developed you know the best part of the games that suit them they have a really strong running game but they really they, they absolutely have huge men in central positions that that are that bring a real physicality to the game so I'm expecting a really physical game on on Sunday I think it'll be very um, you know very tactful um, we will see the, you know, Sean Murphy as a sweeper or somebody covering that role for him. And I think um, the battle will still be won and lost in that middle third. You're you're over the Pierce again, Limerick at the moment. Have you considered flogging their players so much to injure them <laughs> <laughs> for the championship? Well, the first thing is I don't see them, so they're perfectly <laughs> safe in that regard. And uh, no, I wouldn't be letting near those good players like that. Uh, <laughs> they'll only come back to us when the when the Limerick project is over. Do you think they'll be Kilkenny? They look awesome so far. They do, and they are, uh, and they, they've, they've been really strong, and they're very worthy um, monster winners this year. Uh, I think that's I think that's a, a, an absolute in the melting pot game mm. I, I, I find it very I just thought Kilkenny's level of improvement uh, last weekend was very impressive for me now I just I felt yeah there we go 15-17 uh, minutes uh, after the after um, half time I think I counted 1-8 to a point mm. is what they clocked I up I think Kilkenny had 13 or 15 shots yeah, after the there you break go. Yeah. and uh, introduced 3 subs and they scored 6 points mm. so they're in rude good health um, you know Walter Walsh. T you know just to be able to spring a player like Walter Walsh in from the bench. Billy Ryan ended up. He, Walter got three. Billy Ryan got two, and the Bill Sheen. Bill Sheen got one. And mm. he threatened even more. Mm. Uh, you yeah. know he was in hard luck. So again, 
uh, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be writing an epitaph for those guys yet. Can I ask you what was the difference between 2016 winning the All Ireland and winning Munster and I think blowing teams out of it nearly every single day? What well, first of all, how good was that and satisfying was that? It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. But I, I would I just I think it needs to be seen in a context of of the project that we were involved in. You know, I think I think you know foundations had been laid. You know, this tip, to be fair, uh, it's my view. Um, tip have been in there or thereabouts at the top table, um, literally since 2008. Mm. Um, you know when Liam came in and put some really really strong structures and brought a, brought a really good group together that we have seen. Uh, you know those guys underpinned with the fellows that are still playing. Um, so I think I, you know I, I think 2016 uh, we made some tweaks to to the project that that Eamon had been running. You know and I was involved with him as well for the previous three years. Um, and it came to fruition. You know, mm. we didn't need to do a huge amount. Um, it was about belief, and it was about, you know, as I say, tweaking a couple of things where we needed to, to be, to you know, to be a little bit grittier in certain areas. And I think we were, but there was no, there was no doubting the quality of of Tips Hurling, and there's still no doubting the quality of Tips mm -hmm. Hurling. But I think we need to find that grittier piece again. Uh, and in terms, you know, um, where did it, as someone said to Georgie Best, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> uh, look. I think I think um You're not saying gonna say drinking women. <laughs> 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 not in Tipperary. <laughs> uh, we'll just pass on all of that. Um I think I think we got a setback in the league final against Galway and that was a that was a really tangible mm. setback and w you know we had to we had to do a fair bit of na naval gazing um, you know, to figure out where that went wrong. And you know, and to be fair, I take a lot of responsibility for that in terms of uh, team choice and team preparedness in terms of going out. We hadn't become a bad team overnight, but yet we, we got we got tanked. Um, followed that up then with a first championship game with Cork and again we um, Cork just got a run on us and we you know we weren't ready for that for that you know for, for, for the game that ensued we were probably getting ourselves better ready for a battle that didn't ensue. Mm. Um, and that set us off, you know, and uh, it was just two successive defeats and uh, suddenly the air is the air is out mm. of the tip balloon and we had to try and get the air back in there really, really quickly. And we were slow. We were very slow on building that up. And uh, we did arrive at the semi final stage and we were beaten by a wonder score by one point, uh, by Joe Canning out on the sideline. Mm. And if we could have stretched that to a to a draw what might have happened, you know, uh, and Galway obviously. Well, was that was a huge performance Ireland. compared huge. to what you'd seen huge. for the rest of the summer. But we hadn't, we hadn't it at the right time, and uh, we were chasing that performance for too long that summer. Yeah. And uh, and last year, look, oh God, disaster, you know, not coming out of Munster, um, oh, it just hurt us. And to be fair, at that point in time, Tip needed a change, and look at what they've done, mm. you know, they got straight out of the blocks, and, and they're still alive in the last four. Mm. We, you know. Massive game coming up on Sunday, but you know, from from a tip perspective, we're already in bonus territory. We, you know, we've been we're, we we've got ourselves to the last four. We did the prizes to get to the last two. We would love to do to achieve that in mm. tip. And I think the work has been done with our guys. Is the is the performance level needs to come up? But I wouldn't under underestimate, um, you know, what Liam and the management team will will bring. Uh, and they've been here before, and so have a lot of those players have mm. been exa at this stage before. Um, they know where the standard is. Uh, I, I'd be very hopeful going into this game. How difficult is, is the scrutiny as a Tipperary manager? Because we all know how heavy I that scrutiny is. And at the risk of getting a box now, I'd be probably, you know, the one. But I'd, I'd like to think <laughs> I always played the ball rather than the man and Look, analyzed tactics, etc. I think I think you're in safe company asking that. Uh, number one, we're absolute hurling fanatics in Tim. Mm. So start there. Um, we co we compete with every other hurling county, um, you know, Bar Bar Wexford and Dublin that probably slip our contact. But other than that, we contact most other hurl mm. relevant hurling counties in the country. Um, so you know, we get accused of an arrogance that uh, that I believe doesn't exist. Other than we, you know, <laughs> we well, we're just we better than everyone. <laughs> 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 well, well, you might say that. Nobody I certainly won't be saying that. that. But we look at we love our game. Um, you know. People love to, to maybe we talk it up, but if people love to bring us back down. And, and I look at from my perspective, I think we're entitled to to, to being scrutinised. Um, but it is a goldfish bowl in tip. Yeah. We just love it. Um, I would always say that we should put a little bit more emphasis uh, into our own clubs um, than necessarily just chasing the tip team. You know, that's that's the foundation. Yeah. That's what's going to ensure that this 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 you know this, this what we have worked really really hard to bring tip out of the doldrums and i remember i grew up in in, in, in that 
18 year hiatus where we couldn't hardly win you know we, we were so unsuccessful mm. to where we are now and we're, we are consistently competitive with it with anybody and uh, we don't want you know that's not an accident it wasn't built on straw and um, but it takes a lot of work to keep it there and what about that period you know like Kyle Barrett obviously got dropped off the panel mm. and there's so much scrutiny over mm. that you know you would have had ex-players saying bring him back other people saying you did the right thing how difficult was that do you know, for me, uh, look, there's a personal level, there's a personal um, issue, you know, uh, sorry, there's a personal cost here as well. I never want to, to, to take any actions that hurt any of our players, and I know at that time that would have hurt Carl deeply. Um, and, and then, you know, I'm, you know as, as, as a team management, you, you're, your first and foremost your responsibility is to the group mm -hmm. and to the county. Um, that put their trust in you and you know there are lines you shouldn't cross and there are, and there are consequences that come with when you do um, but the, nobody <laughs> nobody was killed the chap did nothing that that uh, isn't being done the length and breadth of the country every weekend mm -hmm. you know it's just that in season we have to we have to set higher higher standards for ourselves and um, at that time it was important it, it was hugely important um, that that we were just you know we needed to hold firm and uh, keep the standard really high and that's all it was about keeping mm. the standard really really high there's been musical chairs ever since 2008 Liam took over with you and Eamon <laughs> then uh, <laughs> obviously Declan Ryan took over for a couple of years then Eamon took over and you were involved yeah. and then you took over and now they're after getting back involved as well is this ever going to end uh, we do we, we do hope so <laughs> <laughs> I know look uh, and again everyone ha is entitled to their own view of this but for me um, I, I just I just felt you know what Liam um, created and worked really, really hard to create, and, account, and there's a lot more stakeholders than just the, the management team. The players coming together and committing to put a, to, to come together to put their lives on hold for Tipperary hurling. What's, what's what was set up back then and has been maintained, as far as I'm concerned, by and large, to a really high standard, is special. Um, but there's lots more. There's lots more and better um, management teams operating in Tip right here, right now. You know, and uh, I thought it was a really, a really uh, great appointment that Liam was available and made himself available and came to, to, to come and do this tip job right here, right now. And I thought it, it needed a really good, strong, safe pair of hands with different thinking. But if you look at, 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 you know, at all of what Liam has brought with him in terms of personnel and, and support, I think it has really been good for tip. Um, now, the test is Sunday. You know, don't make no mistake, we're, we are judged on our results. But I'm looking at last year's under-21 All Ireland that was won by Liam Cahill against the head. You know, mm. a Cork team that should have, should have, and uh, could have, and should have beaten Tip. Um, won the but they didn't. By 13. But they didn't. Mm. And we, we we prevailed. And you know, a lot of those players are 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 inside in the in the squad, and they're getting better by the day. We're looking forward to um, the Munster final like on tomorrow night, the under-20. Uh, and look, okay, we're gone down a year, so we're looking at a younger cohort of players. But it is ridden with talent, and it's brilliant to see it. talent right throughout the panel. And, uh, and, and you know, and there's, there's a, uh, our manager, Liam Cahill, who's come through the minor ranks as, m as manager, and uh, last year's successful under-21 manager. Um, and, and there's more, there's more. So look, you know, I think it's in good health, and I think, look, uh, that is the end of it. I think when Liam, when Liam hands in the, the guns on and this uh, run, you won't be seeing, you're hearing from Eamon O'Shea and uh, Liam Sheedy or Mick Ryan.